you see him, buddy? Go, go. go Jeff quick. Lewis is the best tennis coach of all time. One tiebreaker. One tiebreaker. You, you versus wanna, like, me. Hit some ground strokes and serve, or you want to just go yeah. right into it? I'm warm already, so you I are? would have an advantage over you. Well, I don't know about that. I think. Uh... M or W? M. W. I'll serve. That's that's a tough loss. To seven. All right. <laughs> All right, let's go. <sighs> Let. Oh, well. <sighs> out. Way out. I like these calls. He looks nervous. I'm gonna double on the first. Ah. Uh, no! Yes! Get over! <laughs> Actually, no. I think I'm done. I think I'm. Go I think I'm done for today. I think I was good. <laughs> you win one zero. So you won some. You did pretty well in college. Yeah, you did pretty well. You won a, a national championship. I won the indoor nationals. Yeah. Individually. Yeah. I, yes. Yes. We won a national team championship my freshman year. I won national indoors. Uh, my sophomore or junior year, I think, as an individual. Yeah, I was number one in the country for the majority of my junior and senior years in college, yeah. That team, and singles. that's a whole t story in itself too, isn't it? Yeah, it was a really, yeah, really good team, yeah. We're still, we still have the record for, we had 64 matches in a row that we, we won. That's still a record, I think, in college, yeah. In that's one in college. That is yeah. absolutely ridiculous. So, yeah, Kevin Anderson team. played for Illinois, didn't he? Kevin played, I was on the team with him for two years. Rajiv Ram. Rajiv Ram. Um, Amir Delic got up to Amir the top Delic. 100. Yeah, he was, he played number one for us that year that we won it. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Rajiv played two, I think. That was ridiculous. We won, so that year we won the team title. Um, Amir won singles. And then our number two doubles team won the doubles, believe it or not. So we won all three, the triple crown that year, yeah. That's crazy. pretty impressive when, yeah. you're, when your number, number two, two doubles team wins, wins the national yeah, championship. Yeah, that was crazy, yeah. So basically what you're saying is I also have a an indirect national championship. Exactly. That's awesome. You do. That's great. <laughs> Good. Uh, uh, whoops. Oh, no way! That oh, was an accident. Good. That's too I mean, good. I mean, I've been working on that drop shot. Yeah, it's on fire. <laughs> the frame drop shot is too good. Let me ask you a question. What was it? Talk to me a little bit about Rafael Nadal. The, the, like, what was his game like? Yeah, he was, he was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, that was back in 2008. That was the first time he was seated one at a slam, I think. So he was number one in the world. Played him second round, center court, really cool atmosphere. Yeah. I mean, that was a great match. Like, yeah, yeah, it was fun, Yeah, right? I never played anybody of that, that caliber before, so it was like just getting used to his ball took a while, you know? That's what I said. Yeah. I tell people, because you told me that once before. You just you commented on just the... It was just so heavy. Yeah, the heaviness of yeah. his ball. It was like, wow, it was a clear difference. Just the, yeah, the ball just coming at you. Like, yeah. I felt like it would hit the ground and pick up speed, and I was like, okay, I got to get... You see this pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I had to get prepared earlier and so it was like, look, I've I've had a great tournament. I I save match points and second round of qualities. I was like, this is all just icy on the cake. Yeah. And I was like, this is going to be the best tennis experience I've ever had in my life. I'm going to go out there. My mentality was like, I'm playing them. I don't go out to a match if I don't play. I'm playing to win. Yeah. But at the same time, like just enjoy the experience. Yeah, yeah. How many times are you going to get this? Sure. So, and that was the only time I did, unfortunately, but didn't you make a few extra bucks from like a sponsorship? Yeah, at the when end? you play those big matches, they'll come to you and ask you um, if you want to put a patch on your sleeve. Right. And I'm like, so let me get this straight. I just put this little thing on my sleeve and you're going to give me 10 grand. I was like, yeah, <laughs> sure, I'll do that. Yeah, no problem. So, yeah. You're like sold. Yeah, I'm like sold. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's nice. But good volley there. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Really? I think it might have been out. We'll give it to you. Was it really out? It was close. I think it might have been out. <laughs> Zero I don't three. think I can call that out, Riley. Zero three. All right. 
He loves it. Oh shoot. I like a challenge. <sighs> Ow. Ow. <sighs> Finally on the board. Um, which brings me to another question. Uh, wh what do you feel is the difference between guys that are like kind of in the challengers? Sorry. Um, maybe 100 in the world or 150 yeah. to 200 in the world. Yeah. And the guys that are like 50 and then the guys that are like top 10. Yeah. God, that's, I mean, you could talk about that for a day, but yeah. um, I think, I think the, di well, starting from the guys that are on the future circuit, I think there's a lot of guys out there that are playing like the lower level tournaments that are just kind of having fun. Yeah. And they're just going out there and they're saying they're pro and they're like, I'm a pro player and, you know, I'm traveling all over the world and I'm partying and I'm having fun. And I don't think they're like taking it really that seriously. There's some players like that. Okay. And then I think you get, and then there's some players that aren't that way that are still just trying to work their way up. But then you get up to like the higher levels. I would say like, to me, like two, 300 is kind of like where those guys, well, anywhere from two to 500-ish, kind yeah. of like, okay, these guys are starting to get more serious. They're playing more challenger level. Yeah. They're getting a taste of that higher level. Yeah. Then it's like, I think those guys, it's really just the professionalism. Like, really? They're not just out there like huh, going through the motion. They're like, okay, this is my job. I'm trying to make. They're not a going out drinking after no, their first I think round. More, and... more, I mean, of course they're going to do some of that stuff, but yeah. I think they're looking at it more as like this isn't just an experience. Sure. This is what I want to do for my career. One three. <sighs> no yes. chance. No chance. Three two. You got me right where you want me. Three two. <sighs> Oh no. Uh, wait, what? You allowed to. 3 3. 3 3. Ah! Oh! Ow! No! Just missed. I like the serve and volley though. Surprised me. You know? Sure, sure. And then I think the difference between like breaking top 100, I never did that, but to me it was like some of it's a little bit of luck, some of it's staying healthy. Like not having the injuries. You had a lot of, of injuries when I you had started to get close, right? Yeah, I had some injuries at the end. So there's that, you know, there's having a good team around you. Like I wasn't able to afford that, not using that as an excuse, but um, I mean, some of it is those guys are just better. You yeah, know? yeah. I mean, and, but they, you know, you get an opportunity. I remember there's a great story about Ellis Ferrer. I don't know if you know this guy, but mm. he's a South African guy. He was, he got to be number one in the world in doubles. He won two Australian Opens, I think. Yeah. But he was like, he had gotten married. He was kind of doing the thing like the futures challenger grind. Yeah. He got into an ATP tournament. He, the week before this, he was thinking about quitting. He told his wife, I don't know if they were married or whatever, but he was like, you know, I'm done. Like I'm, yeah. I'm hanging it up. Like yeah. he played another tournament. He ended up like, you know, won a match he should have lost. I think they won the tournament or something. Yeah. And then from there, like springboarded his career. And he was then making cuts of those tournaments, playing the tournaments week in, week out. Yeah. And then it was like, all right, I belong at this level. And then his career just took off. He was number one in the world in doubles after that. Wow. So I think those things happen, you know? Yeah. So it's a lot of it is like, I see guys out there that I wish I would have played longer. Yeah. I see guys that I played with. I'm like, man, that guy's like top 10 in the world in doubles now. <laughs> you know, and it's like, so part of it is like literally, stay, I call it staying power. Yeah. Staying out there, keep, do, keep going for it. You know, you're going to lose a ton. Like when I was like, when I was like 200 in the world, I was losing way more than I was winning. Yeah. And I hate losing. Like I'm really competitive. And so that, <laughs> that was hard for me. Like it was hard for me to be like playing a sport where like I was doing well, but losing a lot more than I was winning. Like I was like, how is that possible? Yeah. So I think dealing with that is big. I mean, but the guys that have that grit and that staying power and they just keep going, you know? Yeah. They stay healthy and they keep going. No. Four, third, four serving three. Four three, the tides have turned. You're getting four, really three. lucky. We're going for big ace on the tee here. <sighs> ah! Oh. <sighs> ah! <sighs> Ah. 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 Oh yeah, I, yeah, good. They nice shot. <laughs> Four all. I hope you got that one on video. 
Great point. <laughs> Great point. Four all. Better is not retired yet. He's my age. <sighs> ah. Got to make those first serves. <sighs> And then I think when you get to like the next level of those like elite players that are top 20, top 10 in the world, those guys are just, I mean, look at like Djokovic, Rafa, Federer, Murray at a time, all those guys. It's like another level of skill. Yeah. And like movement and just, I don't know. They just, it's like, they're just day in and day out every match. It's like you got to play your best tennis to beat them, you know? It seems like it's little things it's that little, they just do remarkably better. It's a bunch of little things. It's not like maybe, yeah, with Isner, you're like, okay, well, that guy's serve is just unreal. Okay, right. that helps a lot, right? Right. He's also seven feet tall. But, yeah. Um, but a guy like Djokovic is like his backhand's a little bit better than most people. His return is a little bit better. Yeah. His movement is a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. And so you get like three or four of these things. And it's like that adds up to maybe those things are just 1%. Sure. But 10 of them make 10% better than his opponent, you know? So that's it's right. Like, and, and the way scoring is in tennis, that's a huge advantage. It's a big advantage because, like, you know, I mean, if you win a couple more points than your opponent, so a lot of those matches are decided by 5 to 10 points. Yeah. And you get guys like Isner that are losing more points than they're winning and still winning matches because right. they just serve, you know? So interesting. It's not a big difference. And obviously, then you get belief. I mean, you a guy like Djokovic. I mean, he goes out there. He's he believes he's not losing. I mean, yeah, he's so confident. There's and no guy, guys go out there and they play guys like Rafa and Djokovic, and they've already lost before they play. I mean, right? They they know they're not going to win. <laughs> play, play. Ah. Oh. I don't need your pity to heart. <laughs> I just wanted to play the point. <laughs> I'm just getting started. 4-6. Uh, uh, oh, oh, no, I have on. 6-5. I'm going to do my Ryler to heart imitation fist pump. You ready? Come on. Uh, <laughs> just to get really close to his fist like this. Did I do that? Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Like, I would recommend parents, especially the parents that don't know a lot about the sport, like, find a great coach, someone like you that can, like, really mentor these kids, you know? Yeah, I'm I mean, cut that part out. And, That's going to uh, be good. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> like, like who, who is going to be with your child on a day-to-day -day basis is the most important thing. Sure. And it's not just about tennis. It's about, like, developing that kid as a, as a person, as, you know, like, what's their character like? Because when you're, when you're growing up as an athlete, there's a lot of kids that are talented, but if they don't have the right mentality, the right work ethic, discipline, character, they're not going to be successful, as successful as they could be, as if you get a coach that's like really pushing them to like become a better person and is the right kind of person around them that's really being a good influence around them. So I, for me, the most important thing is who am I going to like take my kid to? Like, yeah. do I trust this person? Sure. Is this going to be like a good person to really work with my kid, not just tennis, but also like life, yeah. you know? And no, I tell parents that all the time. Yeah. Research, like they say, well, what, what coach should I bring my kid to? It's like, you need to go watch the coach. Not just any coach. You, yeah. you need to hear about it. You need to yeah. go try different coaches. I have coaches, yep. I have seen parents like stick their kid with a coach. Kid hasn't had a backhand in five years. Yep. And they're like, well, no, we, we really like, you know, we care. You know, it's like, well, sometimes, you know, it's okay to go other, you know, you can, yeah. you can try different coaches and stuff like yeah. that. But I say research the coach. Research, research. You know, go, go to a, like, I think a key thing to ask a coach is, I think it's really important. Like, have you ever had like a six-year-old and made them into like yeah. a college? Tennis? How yeah. often are you, yes. have you in your career taken a young child and made them a and college made them tennis good. player? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. sometimes, because if you go into a junior program and they don't even have a tot program, I know. that's a warning sign right yeah. there. Like they don't yeah. have a feeder style right. program. Yeah. Like it where is. do you get your kids from yep. then? Where do they yep. magically appear? Yep. And usually it means they do because they just take them from other programs right. or something like that. You know. And I think the flip side of that too is like we know. I mean, there's. You know, and I would say my area of expertise is not with younger kids, and I know that. I mean, I can work with them, but and I've, I've had to do more of that working with my own kids. But, you know, you'll get a lot of players, just because a guy was a good pro player, doesn't mean that they can coach a six-year-old kid and sure. give them a foundation and technique and how to do that stuff. So it's also like, how many, like, kids that age are you working with? Like, is this your first player that's, like, that age, I mean, are you gonna give them like a good foundation? Cause that's gonna be a foundation they're gonna build the rest of their game on for their 
whole tennis journey. Sure. So that better be someone that's experienced with that, you know? I mean, so that's huge. Um, yeah. Those two things are huge to me. Yeah, that's is big. That's good. And that's being a being a supporter, you know, being like a positive supporter. I mean, you know, this sounds cliche, but like focusing on the process. I mean, these parents, they want tournament results, they want rankings, they what's the kids UTR, all of that stuff. I would call it BS. It doesn't. I mean, yes, it's a barometer of how the kids improving and how they're doing. But like, the worst thing you can do, like we were we were growing up, like the worst thing you can do is like, oh, who, you know. What's my ranking? What's my UTR? Yeah. Like, you know, all getting so caught up in all that stuff, like, and they're not really developing as their game, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's a big thing too. Like, what is the coach's mentality? Is he like super focused on the rankings and the tournaments and all this stuff with the kids? Or is he focused on like, that's fine. Like, yeah, results, like there's an indication of development, obviously. But is he focused more like on the process of like getting pathway. this kid better? Yeah, yeah. Like, like are we pathway. developing the game? Is the kids staying, are the kids he coaches staying back and just like pushing the ball with terrible technique? Or are yeah. they like hitting the ball and like, man, this kid looks like a little pro. Yeah, right. So then you know, okay, this guy's gotta be doing some coaching, right? Yeah, so, I'm always impressed yeah. when I see a, a young kid like not I'm, it doesn't take yeah, much like, to do impress me these days. they have a grip, boom, are they coming in like, Yeah, like know. if the kid's not pancaking a serve, like, you yeah. have a good coach, exactly. congratulations. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good sign. For that, sure. So, um, if the kid's doing that, so no, that's great. Yep. Do the fetter like this. Six, right, five. match point. Six, Don't five, get nervous. point. Where's he gonna go? Probably out wide. <laughs> ah! 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 Uh, oh, no. no! The leg court. <laughs> if it wouldn't have been a leg court. Huh? That was good. You played well.